Año Uno, Obama and Latin America, next on International Focus. The Institute of World Affairs at UWM and Milwaukee Public Television present International Focus, a global magazine linking Wisconsin and the world. Welcome to International Focus. I'm Doug Savage, Assistant Director of the Institute of World Affairs at UWM. When Barack Obama was elected president, many people looked forward to his administration hitting the proverbial reset button on U.S. relations with Latin America. At the April 2009 Summit of the Americas, he announced his approach to the region would be based on, quote, mutual respect, common interests, and shared values. After a year in office, however, there's a growing sense in Latin America that Obama's promise of change has devolved into a continuation of the policies of his predecessors. To help us explore hopes for a new era in U.S.-Latin American relations and how the realities of governance have impacted them, we're joined in the studio by Ames McGinnis, Associate Professor of History at the University of Wisconsin-Milwaukee, where he specializes in Latin America and U.S. Empire. We're also joined by phone by Lisa Haugard, Executive Director of the Latin America Working Group, a Washington-based coalition focused on U.S. policy in the region. Well, welcome both of you to International Focus. Thank you. It's great to be here. Well, Lisa, I'd like to start with you, if I could, uh, and maybe set the stage a bit by looking back to the Bush administration and what was the, the perception in the region of how that administration dealt with the, the countries of the region? What, what were the concerns? Well, the Bush administration took place during a time of a real leftward um, swing in Latin American governments, and uh, that produced a real tension between the Bush administration and, um, and many Latin American governments. The, um, the perception was that uh, the Bush administration had just a couple of allies in Latin America, uh, particularly Colombia and Mexico, and a constant rhetoric about our two friends in Latin America and uh, the tension with the others, including with quite centrist governments like Lula's administration in Brazil, um, really set the, the, a negative tone um, for the time. Uh, the Latin America also really reacted to the um, the use of, of the post 9/11 period to um, uh, for the administration to go to war with Iraq. Uh, that was seen as a very um, militaristic and disproportional response in Latin America, and there was a real concern over. Um, after an initial enormous sympathy from Latin American governments, there was a real concern about the way this sort of war on terrorism and the war on, uh, in Iraq was, was couched. Then there was a, just a general sense that um, the United States was ignoring the region and pr not providing um, sufficient development assistance. So what, what were the expectations then of uh, the incoming Obama administration? Oh, there was a tremendous sense of glee and anticipation um, throughout in many uh, uh, places in Latin America. There was kind of an amazement that um, that an African American man would become president. Um, his rhetoric was seen as very, um, very uh, approachable and welcome, um, and there was just a, a tremendous sense of hope. Well, and now. Uh some 12 months later, that, uh, that hope seems to have tarnished a bit. Uh, you know, in a, a recent article, uh, Tim Padgett, writing in Time magazine, said, uh, quote, the Obama ha administration has ceded Latin American strategy to right-wing cold warriors. Now, what, what do you think is the basis of a statement like that? Well, there's a real base, base in reality. On the other hand, the picture is pretty complicated. Um, Obama started. President Obama started out um, really on a on a on a in a good direction with the Summit of the Americas, which was one of the first big international events that he participated in as president. And he came with, as you mentioned in your introduction, with some very good rhetoric about mutual respect, 
about poverty, addressing poverty, about cooperation with Latin America, and really hit a lot of the right notes and a note of wanting to work with um, all kinds of governments in Latin America, not just have a couple of friends um, among the more conservative governments. So that was a very good way to begin. Um, uh, but since then, we've seen um, uh, a lot more um, uh, same old, same old um, in, in responses. Um, uh, one has been um, in the, the case of um, Honduras, and this is probably the one that most affects um, uh, perceptions in Latin America. Could it you uh, maybe just uh, refresh our, our viewers' mm -hmm. memories of, of the scenario of the constitutional crisis? Um, there, in, on June 28th in Honduras, there was a coup um, in which um, uh, n the military, along with significant sectors of, of civilian government, um, took the president, um, uh, uh, removed the president from power, the military placed him on a plane to Costa Rica. And the initial response from the Obama administration was basically good. It was, this is a coup, it's, uh, it is illegitimate, um, and something needs to be done about that. Um, and so this initial response was not what, frankly, the Bush administration might have immediately said, this is fine. Um, the Obama administration did not. Um, well, we should add the perception, at least in this country, was that uh, the government that had been ousted was definitely left of center. Yeah, left of center did things like pass a, minimum, an, an, a, a big increase to the minimum wage, um, talked about rewriting the Constitution, but didn't actually um, do that. Um, the big controversy was over um, adding an additional... Um, uh, a box that you could check off um, for uh, whether you wanted to see a constitutional referendum in the future. And there, there was a controversy over that. But, um, but initially, the Obama administration basically said it is a coup. However, um, it, it dithered uh, considerably over a definition of whether this was a military coup. And the language was, was never as tough and as strong and as firm as it really should have been. Um, but some assistance was um, suspended by the administration to the, the coup um, government um, uh, uh, led by um, President um, Micheletti. Um, and, and that was a positive response. But um, there was a significant backlash from conservative members of Congress, particularly Senator DeMint from South Carolina, um, who um, placed a hold on the nomination of the highest State Department official um, over Latin America um, and uh, would not allow that nomination to go through over the issue of Honduras. Um, these conservative members of Congress felt that it wasn't a coup and that the United States should support the Micheletti government because, basically because he overthrew a leftist president. Um, and they felt that the way it was done was legitimate. Um, and so basically, things went along until um, right before um, elections were, were scheduled. Um, and the administration, the Obama administration, kept trying to get the Micheletti government to step down and allow an interim government to come in before the elections. But in October, the, the Obama administration seriously backed down and basically said, we will recognize the elections, you know, no matter, no matter what happens. And that was seen as a signal by the Micheletti regime to stand tough and refuse to back down and refuse to allow an interim government. To well, and uh, shortly thereafter, on November 9th, Artur Valenzuela, his uh, pick four assistant secretary for the region, was confirmed. That is what happened, and that was certainly seen in Latin America as a sign of the Obama administration um, seriously backing down and then basically accepting the elections as legitimate. 
So that was a real disappointment um, for, for many in Latin America, but it wasn't the only disappointment that we've seen. Um, to mention um, a, a couple of others, one is that as um, human rights groups had certainly hoped that the Obama administration would take um, more seriously um, human rights um, in relation to its, its closest partners, Colombia and Mexico, and particularly since the United States is providing um, considerable military assistance and police assistance to both countries, um, uh, human rights groups in both in the United States and Latin America believed that the, um, the administration should really um, uh, put some serious pressure on both um, countries to clean up abuses with, the, with their armed forces. Um, and uh, we saw the Obama administration basically taking a, a pass and not enforcing um, human rights conditions or human rights requirements that were attached to these large-scale security um, aid packages. And that was a real disappointment and very unnecessary. Um, and we're still sort of trying to, to figure out, you know, why that happened and whether that's going to continue to happen. Well, but that another, was another area, signal. if we could, uh, I'd like to bring up is Cuba. Now, obviously, there are certain aspects of our relations that are governed uh, by Congress and not subject to executive order. But are there things that Obama could have done unilaterally in, on that front? Well, he did do one thing, which is to um, lift the ban on um, the restrictions on travel for Cuban-American families, which the Bush administration had, had um, uh, lifted. But um, it, the Obama administration could, you know, push uh, certainly a lot harder for a, a full lifting of the travel ban and, for, and could ease up um, uh, on... Um, on restrictions on cultural exchanges and so on. And uh, it, there's a lot that the Congress has to do and the administration can't um, on, on the travel embargo, but there are um, other measures the administration um, could take to make um, travel and exchange um, uh, easier um, and would be a natural thing for this administration that does care about cooperation with the rest of the world and dialogue, um, those would be, you know, very rational um, actions for it to take. Well, and uh, we would be remiss as we're uh, talking today to, to not say a word about uh, the situation in Haiti. How would you characterize the, the post-quake response by the administration? I would say this offer, if the first year has been a bit of a false start on Latin America, this offers the Obama administration the chance for a fresh start. And the administration's response, as far as we can see so far, has been very, um, uh, very intense and, and rapid and, and serious. Um, we've seen um, uh, emergency relief, $100 million in emergency relief immediately be dedicated. That is by no means the, the end of it. That's just the first step. Um, and a real mobilization of, of the U.S. government um, for um, Haiti relief. We've also seen um, very positive step in that the administration um, halted the deportations of Haitians by granting an extension of 18 months for te uh, temporary um, protected status for um, Haitians in the United States. And that's really important for Haitian families here to be able to continue to help their, their families in Haiti. Um, so those, were two, those are two steps that have already taken place. Um, there's a lot of, um, th there'll be a lot of, of more difficult um, uh, terrain to cover in making sure that um, the relief effort um, uh, that any security attached to it really respects human rights, that Haitians are fully involved in the aid, um, uh, in the re reconstruction process. Um, so there are a lot of sort of more difficult questions down the line, but at least um, this administration is not ignoring um, Haiti. Well, and uh, the, the diplomatic team is much more in place than it was a year ago, so we'll look forward to... Uh to what happens in the next 12 months. 
Exactly. There was a real excuse that the Obama administration didn't have their team in place, but honestly, as the year dragged on, that, that is no longer, was no longer an acceptable excuse, and we need to see some real new thinking. Okay. Well, Lisa Haugard, Latin America Working Group, thank you very much for joining us. Thank you. We're going you. to take a short break, and to our viewers, we'll see you just in a minute on International Focus. The Institute of World Affairs presents our community with a range of public programs relating to global issues, U.S. foreign policy, and the world economy. For more information about the Institute of World Affairs, call 414-229-3220 or visit our website at www.iwa.uwm.edu. Welcome back to International Focus. We're talking about the Obama administration's first year in dealing with Latin America with Ames McGinnis. Well, Ames, I wonder if you could uh, pick up on, on some of the themes that uh, Lisa mentioned, particularly the idea of uh, the extent to which Obama's policy in the region has, has really been uh, seeded to, as uh, the, the Time Magazine piece said, uh, right-wing cold warriors. And what, what's the connection there? Well, I, I'd like to begin by saying that I uh, agree very much with everything that, that Lisa said, and I'm actually a great admirer of the Latin American Working Group. Um, they're a great source of information on Latin America and U.S. policy uh, towards Latin America. Um, I think uh, to echo one thing that Lisa said, um, there, <clears throat> there has been uh, a perception, an accurate perception, that um, Latin America has not been high on President Obama's agenda. And one can make excuses for President Obama. Um, certainly, he has had a lot on his plate, uh, given the financial crisis the struggle to, to pass health care reform. But actually, this is precisely the, the problem uh, um, that U.S. policy towards Latin America has suffered from uh, uh, now for, uh, since, the big, really the, uh, since September 11th, the perception in Latin America itself that U.S. policymakers don't think that Latin America matters, that it's Latin America is at the agenda. And that perception, which I think is an accurate one, has itself become, I think, a barrier to good relations with the country. Um, one way in which the Obama administration could alter that perception, one very powerful way, as Lisa said, would be to act meaningfully uh, to help contain and repair the, the horrible damage caused um, by the earthquake in Haiti. This is, incidentally, uh, a great opportunity for civilians in the United States uh, to make a difference um, uh, through non-governmental organizations, charities. You know, these organizations also play a very important role in how people in Latin America perceive the United States. So this is an opportunity, again, not just for U.S. policymakers, but for everyday people in the United States to make a difference both for Haiti, but also for the future of relations between Latin America and the United States. Well, and and what about sort of the, the big picture, if you look at a sort of right-left axis? I mean, as, as Lisa mentioned, there were a number of governments that moved to the left during uh, the last eight years. And uh, you know, what, what is your sense of, of the American reaction to that. I mean, the Obama administration seemed willing to reach out to governments that the, the, his predecessor certainly had not. I mean, he, he had some interaction with Hugo Chavez, for example, at the Summit of the Americas. But to what extent does uh, that sort of uh, knee-jerk reaction to, uh, to any sort of left-leaning governments in this country still impact his ability to operate in the region? Well, I, I guess I would I'd start off by noting an irony, which is that during the years of the, of the second Bush administration, the nightmare that Ronald Reagan regularly conjured up in the, in the 1980s became a reality. Um, 
you know, there are now more uh, self-proclaimed socialists and leftists in um, power on a national level in Latin America than there ever have been in Latin American history. <clears throat> uh, we were told um, by the Reagan administration in the 1980s that this, uh, this ever happening would be a disaster for the United States. Well, on some level, uh, that has happened. On the other hand, uh, the world that we live in right now is very different from uh, the world of the 1980s. Uh, most importantly, um, obviously, the Soviet Union and its empire has collapsed. Um, so there, with the collapse of that superpower uh, rivalry, um, I think many people in the United States assumed that the United States would simply emerge as the uncontested hegemon in the hemisphere. But actually, uh, that's not uh, what's happened. Instead, the United States has taken its eye off the ball, especially since September 11th. And increasingly, uh, Latin Americans are making political and economic alliances uh, with powers outside of the Americas, most importantly, China, uh, um, but other, with other countries as well. So I, I think that many Latin American countries now, and not just um, countries that are on the left currently are, are, are generating multilateral um, foreign policies. Uh, and they increasingly see the United States as certainly an important player, but just one of a number of players uh, that need to be considered. And the United States needs to recognize that, that, that it cannot simply throw its weight around um, as it imagined it could uh, during the 1980s. Um, even with the collapse of the, of the Soviet Union, the United States doesn't exercise, <clears throat> I think, remotely the kind of power regionally uh, that it exercised only two decades ago. Well, and, and what about uh, sort of the, the underlying economic approach I and mean, the, the Washington consensus kinds of issues uh, where, where I think in the region, at least, it was perceived that Washington was dictating to the, to the region how their economy should run. Now, well, certainly the last year has uh, given some pause on that model, has it? I think that's absolutely the case. You know, um, even before Argentina and then other <clears throat> Latin American countries began to issue direct challenges to the U.S. and to the International Monetary Fund and the World Bank, even before then, I think there was some um, a great deal of, of uh, resentment, um, not only on the left, but also on the right in Latin America about what many perceived to be the United States' rather self-righteous and, and often, frankly, hypocritical preaching about uh, free trade. Um, but the, the financial meltdown, I think, uh, has, as, you, as you said, done a tremendous amount to decrease uh, the credibility of the United States um, as a source of economic power uh, and as a source of uh, economic inspiration, uh, as it were, across the planet, uh, but I think especially in, 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 perhaps especially in Latin America. So uh, now the, the first 12 months are over. We've, we've had a few hiccups, but uh, as, as we mentioned earlier, the, the policy team is in place, so if, if you're put at the head of that team and are, are formulating the administration's Latin America policy, what, what are some of the items on your to-do list? What, what are some of the real priorities for the administration? Well, you know, I think, um, uh, again, Lisa, I think, is much better qualified to offer specific recommendations uh, of that kind uh, than I. Um, but among the things that would be on, on my agenda would be, uh, number one, um, uh, take serious steps to continue these, the serious uh, steps that are already underway to address the problems uh, caused by the earthquake in Haiti. Uh, number one, uh, because the human beings uh, who live in, in Haiti who are, are in uh, great distress right now. Uh, and number two, because the United States needs to send a message not only to Haiti but to the region uh, in general that the United States, that, that Latin America and the Caribbean matter that the United States and matter to the United States, that the United States um, recognizes that 
economic development um, and human rights are our central priorities, and that the United States is capable of dealing with Latin Americans um, as equals, uh, not as, um, as uh, students uh, in need of, of, of tutelage. Um, so I, I, that, that's number one. I, I, I think um, addressing, as, as Lisa said, um, problems of human rights in both Colombia and, and Mexico would be vitally important for both of those nations, but would also send an important message regionally, but also internationally. And we have to remember that um, Latin America has been uh, in a very negative way, in my opinion, a, a kind of proving ground for U.S. empire, U.S. foreign relations uh, since the mid-19th century. Um, and um, the rest of the world beyond Latin America, I think, importantly sees how the United States behaves in Latin America as a measure of its capacity to act as a fair dealer. Well, uh, I think we're going to have to leave it at that. That's good advice to our viewers. We'll see you next time on International Focus. Institute, call 414-229-3220 or visit us at our website.